In recent months, we've taken a look at affordable cars on this channel. Sedans, hatchbacks, and crossovers around $30,000 and below. And a lot of you have been messaging me and asking for more reviews like that so you can compare and contrast affordable cars that you're interested in buying. Today, we're taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Impreza Sport which is perfect because recently we checked out the Volkswagen Jetta Sport and also the Honda Civic Sport and all three cars are priced at around $25,000. But you might be looking for a vehicle that provides the best value and that's where the Impreza might come into play. Now, the Impreza does have the misfortune of being in the same lineup with the Crosstrek the Forester and the Outback. Three vehicles that are very high volume sellers, but also vehicles that people, especially in colder regions of the US, absolutely love and adore. But if you're looking to buy an affordable car, maybe this is your first ever brand new car, it might be the Impreza Sport that could be the best fit for you. Now, before we get in this video, I'd like to thank Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. And speaking of inventory, Subaru Wakefield is home to the largest selection of Subarus in New England. As you can probably tell, the lot is full. I have not seen it this full in probably four or five years. So if you are looking at buying a brand new Impreza, maybe a Legacy, Outback, Forester, or even a WRX, definitely take a look at what they have. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. As much as we'd like to think that most Americans have moved on to larger and expensive crossovers, there's still plenty of demand for the affordable, efficient, and practical car that buyers on a budget will be happy owning for three or more years. The Subaru Impreza is one of those candidates. And while compacts haven't always been looked to as being the most tech-focused or inspiring, the sixth generation for this nameplate comes with a slew of features that just might make it worth considering for even the pickiest of shoppers. While the number of Americans preferring cars over crossovers has dwindled in recent years, the Impreza has become a bit of a dark horse in this segment. Starting off with pricing, the Sport comes in at just under $25,000 and serves as the mid-tier trim for 2024. Unlike competitors, Subaru has taken a simplified approach to this hatchback, where there's a clear distinction as to what this affordable car offers buyers when you break down the different models. Because hatchbacks are also being phased out to a certain degree, as vehicles like the Crosstrek provide a better value proposition, the Impreza finds itself in a position where it can be that practical and potentially fun car in a market that's typically tailing to shoppers wanting an efficient point A to point B daily driver. While we wouldn't hesitate suggesting going with the RS, the sports list of incentives over the base begins with the exterior, as this trim from an aesthetics perspective addresses one of this small car's weak points that was present last generation. Since the WRX broke away from the Impreza nameplate, Subaru's taken a reserved approach to their most affordable car. But starting last year, this hatchback began garnering some attention, renewing interest and excitement. With the Sport, gloss black accents for the grille add a nice color contrast for the front fascia. But very surprising for a vehicle in this market is the steering responsive LED headlights and LED fog lights, significantly modernizing the front fascia while simultaneously giving drivers an ample amount of light in adverse weather or on dimly lit streets. Aside from the minor aesthetic cues, the angular design and sharper body lines has given the Impreza a more dynamic appearance, which was lacking and now has become a main focal point for this car. Moving over to the side profile, by opting for the Sport, you'll receive the upgraded 18-inch alloy wheels, giving the Impreza a nicer road presence compared to the 16s found on the base. Obviously, ride quality might be a concern, as upsizing on the tires usually affects road noise or comfort. However, being built on Subaru's global platform, there's a lot of rigidity and refinement to the chassis and suspension, where imperfections in the road shouldn't affect the stability of this hatchback. You'll have body color matching side mirrors, with turn signal indicators. And for the Sport, blind spot detection is optional, 
but equipped on our model today. Then as we make our way around to the back, compared to the prior model year, the bumpers, taillights, and hatch are more angular and aerodynamic, and we're seeing the same cosmetic features become present on most of the vehicles in Subaru's lineup. Blending in with the body color are larger reflectors on the bumper, which was far more noticeable on the RS we had featured last year. Ultimately, it's the 2024 model where the Impreza takes on a sleeker and aggressive look. Distancing itself from the slightly less assuming generation, it's replaced. Under the hood, much like with the base, the Impreza is powered by a 2-liter, naturally aspirated boxer 4-cylinder engine, producing 152 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a CVT. As much as a 2.5-liter 4-cylinder in the RS would be beneficial to this hatchback across the board, the Sport isn't underpowered in regards to where it ranks amongst its closest competitors. And if you are begging for a strong powertrain from your daily driver, you'll either have to spend a few thousand dollars extra for either the RS or a decently equipped Legacy if you prefer owning a car. For the Impreza specifically, it's all about being economical and feasible for buyers on a budget. And to factor in that all-wheel drive does come standard for a hatchback puts Subaru ahead of its rivals in one key metric. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 27 miles per gallon in the city and 34 miles per gallon on the highway. It's when you step inside where Subaru has done an admirable job of making their most affordable offering in the lineup resemble the Forester and Outback, more specifically when discussing the technology and features that come equipped on the Impreza and for the sport trim. While soft touch materials are kept to a minimum, much like we see for most compact cars and subcompact crossovers, you're still met with a driving environment that to an extent contradicts the price tag. Up front, you'll have cloth seats which are manually adjustable for the driver and passenger, providing a decent amount of support relative to the market the Impreza competes in. However, for a sportier experience, you may enjoy the RS's seats a bit more. Since we have the $1,900 optional package for the Sport, you'll have two level heated seats, heated side mirrors, a power moonroof, and rear cross traffic alert and blind spot detection, providing even more value for a sub $30,000 hatchback. In front of you will be a small display in between your analog gauges, where you can scroll through some information such as the tire pressure monitoring system and fuel efficiency, and this gauge cluster can be found throughout the Subaru lineup. Then taking a glance over to the infotainment system, an incentive to choose the Sport over the base model is the 11.6 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. For those hopping in from an older Impreza, there will be a learning curve as the physical dials and buttons for the head unit and climate control have been rearranged or removed entirely. And while this might create some apprehension, just know that dual zone climate control is now standard because of this change and that's a feature you won't find in a majority of rivals. More tablet-like than before, the Starlink user interface does become second nature to use after a while, and you'll eventually get comfortable using this screen when driving. As always, you'll have a rear backup camera, and to help park the Impreza, you will have trajectory as well. Beneath the screen, you'll have a cubby for a smartphone or wallet, and you'll find a USB-C and USB input. Then for the center console, on the passenger side, will be the switches for the two level heated seats. And then to round out the front seating area, for the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for smaller items. Now moving on to the second row, we're going to sit off on the passenger side. I didn't adjust this seat all the way back, nor did I really slide it all the way backwards on a recline. But I do have a good amount of legroom here to work with. When you take a look at legroom dimensions, it comes in right around 36 and a half inches of legroom, which isn't necessarily class leading. It's also not comparable to what we see from the Forester and Outback. If you can maximize your budget to around 30 to maybe $34,000, I would say take a look at the Forester if you do have a family and you want to prioritize that interior spacing. But keep in mind that with the Impreza, it is an economical car, it's an affordable car, 
and practical and versatile in a sense. So at around twenty-three to twenty-six thousand dollars, you're getting exactly what you're looking for in this particular segment. Now it will fall a bit short when it comes to the interior space to some rivals such as the Honda Civic and also the Volkswagen Jetta. But then again, keep in mind that you do have that all-wheel drive system and you have a hatchback. So it's all gonna come down to trade-offs. If you are a younger driver, you don't have a family, you don't have people sitting in the back, that's not gonna be too much of an issue at all. But during those times that you are going to have passengers, I don't think they're gonna feel cramped or claustrophobic. Tall passengers might be hitting their head on the headliner. But outside of that, this is exactly what you're gonna be looking for in this particular market. Now moving on to the center seat, you are going to have some great placements for your feet. The center hump is pretty aggressive, so keep that in mind. It will take away from shoulder room and possibly leg room as well, limiting this vehicle to just having two people in the back, which I would say the exact same for a lot of rivals in this market. So really nothing that I would be taking too much note of in that regard. But I do think though that on a shorter drive, you could try squeezing in a smaller child or maybe even a smaller adult. And then on the driver's side, the seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5", five five, and I have plenty of legroom here where I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. So honestly, with it being an economical car, with it being a fuel-efficient vehicle, I think when it comes to interior space, this is pretty much on par and what you would expect for a vehicle at around 25 grand. Also back here, not too much of a surprise, you do not get air vents mounted on the center console, nor do you get a USB-C or USB input. However, with the Sport, and one of the reasons why I would say go with the Sport over the base is that you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, obviously you're not going to receive a power liftgate on the Impreza, but inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 20 and a half cubic feet of room. And versatility and practicality is really what helps the Impreza become a great option in this segment. Because this is on par with the Honda Civic Sport hatchback. It's better than the Mazda 3 hatchback. And also because Volkswagen doesn't offer a hatchback in this price range, the Impreza becomes a bit more of an appealing choice. Also, of course, as we already talked about, the Impreza does have super symmetrical all-wheel drive coming standard, which a lot of manufacturers don't give you under $30,000. I was able to fit on my camera gear today, no problem. So that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod. And I still have plenty more room to store groceries or other items. If I'm going on a road trip with the family, I think I can easily fit seven, eight, possibly up to 10 bags of luggage back here, depending on the size of those bags. So the Impreza, is kind of a family friendly option, but also if you do live in the city or the suburbs and you're constantly on the go, you have stuff with you at all times, this vehicle is definitely versatile in that sense. Also, of course, too, if you are a younger consumer and you live in the city, you can park on the street, more importantly, with this car. Then with the second row seats folded, you're looking at right around 56 cubic feet of room. Once again, falling in line with a lot of hatchbacks and compact cars in this market. And in a way, it's similar to what we see from other subcompact crossovers, such as the Subaru Crosscheck, if you're somebody who doesn't want a crossover at this price point. Then on both sides of the rear cargo area, you will have some cubbies for some smaller items, such as maybe a couple water bottles, car detail equipment, or maybe even a first aid kit. Also back here and not installed on our Impreza Sport today, you do have the indentations for your rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And finally, for the moment we've all been waiting for, Let's take the Super Impreza Sport out for a test drive. All right, so we're now behind the wheel of the 2024 Impreza Sport. Let's take this hatchback out for a quick test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to other affordable cars in this market, such as the Honda Civic Sport and Volkswagen Jetta Sport, but also if this is the pick in the lineup for the Impreza compared to say an RS. Now personally, I would go with the RS because it has the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. However, the Sport is offering a great package here, especially for a vehicle at around $25,000. Now let's first start off with the front vision you have here to work with since we are at a red light. 
You have a nice panoramic view. A pillars are super thin with this being a car, so you won't have any blind spots when you are approaching intersections or red lights. Then taking a look at your side mirrors, they are decently sized. I can see what's in my blind spots. Also, best of all, with the Sport, you do get blind spot detection, which I think is a huge plus for this car, especially at around 25 grand. And then looking out back, I can see everything directly behind me, even with the headrests in the way. Of course, with this being a hatchback, you're gonna have that nice clear view behind you. So from that standpoint, the safety is really great with this vehicle because you also get eyesight driver assist technologies, which makes the Impreza a great pick if you're buying a brand new car for the young driver in the family. I think that alone makes the Impreza worth taking a look at and considering. But from an on-road driving perspective, with the Sport, you do get a sports tuned suspension. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be like a Subaru WRX, so don't walk in thinking you're gonna be taking on some back roads or some canyon roads and absolutely tearing the road up, but it does give you some feedback when you are driving around on those back roads. What I also like too is that you do get some decent weight to the steering. Again, not necessarily like the Subaru WRX. However, Subaru did add about 10% torsion rigidity to the suspension and the chassis. So it really gives you more of a sportier experience than in prior generations and prior model years. Also thing too is that with this two liter four cylinder engine, sure you do get 152 horsepower. So not a barnstormer, not anything that's gonna be pushing you back in your seat. However, when you are comparing this to the Honda Civic Sport, it's very comparable, but because the CVT in the Subaru mimics an automatic, you have that mimicked gear shifts, it's more of a refined experience, it's a more enjoyable experience. And because of that, you don't get the rubber band effect, you don't get the droning, and Subaru has done a fantastic job making a CVT appealing. I know a lot of people don't like them, but if you are gonna be buying a Japanese vehicle, I think Subaru is one of the best manufacturers out there giving you a CVT that has some sense of refinement and comfort, whereas when you are comparing it to a Honda, a Nissan, sometimes even with Toyota, their CVTs do drone, and it's very difficult to enjoy the driving experience and enjoy your weekly commutes. One of the key reasons as to why you'd want to go with a Sport over a base Impreza is that you do get the SI drive system. Now we gotta put it in sport and see what we can do here. I do notice that throttle response is a bit more active. Steering is a bit more playful. Nice strong brakes too. At around 40 miles an hour, very little body roll. That is one key difference compared to the Crosstrek, especially if you go with the Wilderness. But most likely, you're cross-shopping this with other compact sedans and hatchbacks and I like the fact that it is pretty agile here. Now of course since this isn't an RS you don't have the 2.5 but I do like the 2 liter especially for a vehicle of this size. It doesn't really lag too much. Decent amount of torque too. You can get around some of these slower drivers. Get off this rotary. Once again on the brakes, nice and strong. In the corners. You can definitely tell that we do have a sports tune suspension. You experience the benefits for sure with this car. Again, nothing like my Subaru WRX, but pretty peppy. Pretty athletic as well for what it is. Now also from a performance perspective, another key difference with the Impreza over its closest rivals, Subaru doesn't offer a male transmission with this hatchback. And they used to, but I understand why Subaru did that though, because most likely if you are an enthusiast and you want a manual transmission, you want it paired with a turbo four, you want it paired with something that gives you an exhilarating driving experience. And most likely, you're gonna go with a WRX, you're gonna go with a Honda Civic Si, you're gonna go with a Volkswagen Jetta GLI. And personally, I'd like to see what the sales figures are for brands that do offer a manual in this particular price range because I don't think it's very high. But anyway, on these suburban streets here with bumps and imperfections, the Impreza is handling them pretty well, even with the sports tune suspension. 
And honestly, what is pretty impressive here is that for a car under 30 grand, there's not a lot of road noise. And even though we have the 18 inch wheels, it's not making too much of a difference. So if this is gonna be your commuter, it should be a nice pleasant experience for you, especially with these seats too. They provide a decent amount of bolstering as well. One thing to keep in mind here with the Impreza, and more specifically for this trim, but also when you're comparing it to other models in the lineup and comparing it to rivals in this segment, is that everything is all about trade-offs because with the Impreza, you don't get the 8.7 inches of ground clearance like you'd get with the Crosstrek. You're not getting a vehicle that is off-road worthy, but you do get all-wheel drive. For this trim, you're also not getting the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, you're getting the two liter. I don't think the two liter is bad for a car of this size and its weight. Then when you compare it to the Honda Civic Sport and also the Volkswagen Jetta Sport, I think performance-wise it is on par with the Civic. I think the CVT performs better than the CVT that you have in the Civic. Of course, you can opt for a manual. And then the Jetta, it's really all about the fact you do get a traditional automatic, where a lot of vehicles in this market are CVT only. So that's where the Jetta might be a great option. But with the Impreza, you get all-wheel drive, which makes this car more practical in a sense, and also a more sensible option and choice compared to the rivals because there's not many manufacturers that offer all-wheel drive under 30 grand, and especially for a car of this size. If you experience snow three to six months out of the year, that's where the Impreza really becomes an appealing choice and option. But then also throw in the fact that you have a vehicle that is economical, that with this platform, Subaru's global platform is refined, it becomes really a great value at $25,000. So let's finally get on the highway here with the Impreza. Let's see what the two liter is capable of with this hatchback. I've had to dodge a lot of traffic today. It's just one of those days, but also that's what you get when you live within the I-95 corridor. Now, as you can tell with the two liter, it's not very torquey, but you can get up to speed in a safe manner. and pass slower drivers. However, I do think though that if you are somebody who prefers to have a bit more horsepower and torque on demand, that's where the RS would be a better choice. But then again, you are spending a few extra thousand dollars for the RS, so that will be something to keep in mind. I do think that the two liter is more than adequate for a car like this. It's not something that I would find uh, to be an issue if you are somebody who is just looking for a point A to point B car and you've cross-shopped this with the competition such as a Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic. A lot of cars in this market have underpowered four cylinders and this doesn't feel much different. The only difference I would say though is just that with the CVT, it doesn't drone as much. So let's get back on the highway here. Let's do a little bit of a road noise check. Honestly, at 65 miles an hour, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Also thing too is that with the 18s, it doesn't really affect on-road demeanor or comfort either. And that's also factoring in that you do have a sports tuned suspension. But this is a testament to Subaru's global platform because interior insulation was a top priority when hopping to this generation. And that was across the board with all Subaru models, whether it was the Crosstrek, Forester, Outback, or Legacy, that to go with the global platform, everything's about making this car more pleasant to drive, more enjoyable to drive. And I think Subaru has accomplished that. And really, the Impreza is part of a market where you look at econo boxes that maybe they are meant to be driven longer drives, they're meant to be beat up in the long run because they're workhorses. And with the Impreza, you're getting a car that in my mind does feel pretty nice for the price point. Obviously, you're not going to have soft touch materials on the dashboard or armrests, but for $25,000, you're getting a really nice hatchback here. So to quickly wrap up my time with the 2024 Subaru Impreza Sport, what are my final thoughts and takeaways for this mid-level trim? 
ultimately it will boil it down to the features that you have here with this car. Because for $25,000, there's some key features that you're not going to find on some rivals, especially in this particular market. You have heated front seats, you have dual zone climate control, which is standard across all three trim levels for 2024 for the Impreza. Because this is a Subaru, it has super symmetrical all-wheel drive standard. The Impreza is a hatchback only, so it's practical. Then when you go with an optional package, you have heated side mirrors along with blind spot detection and a power moonroof. A lot of vehicles in this market don't offer optional packages. So what you pay for is really what you get. You're not going to be able to throw in any additional add-ons. So from that standpoint, the Impreza is worth taking a look at and might be a better value than what we see from the Honda Civic Sport and also the Volkswagen Jetta Sport. But as I talked about during the test drive, it's going to be trade-offs because from a performance perspective, even within the Impreza lineup, you're missing out on the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with this two liter, so it's not going to be as peppy. It is going to be on par with the Honda Civic Sport, but the Volkswagen Jetta Sport has a traditional automatic. So the Impreza does fall in the middle in that sense because we also have a sports tuned suspension with this particular model. So it's all going to come down to what you're looking for in a daily driver at around $25,000, $27,000. But I got to be honest here that with the Impreza, because you get those features, because you do get all-wheel drive, it makes more sense for somebody who is living in colder regions of the U.S., someone who encounters snow, or somebody who does live an active lifestyle. And that's why the Impreza might be worth considering. Also, of course, again, I would steer you towards the Crosstrek though because you have the ground clearance, you have the plastic cladding, it's a bit more of a rugged vehicle. But if you're strictly looking at buying a hatchback and you want something that is affordable, that still gives you the safety and the equipment that you're looking for, that's where I would say definitely take a look at the Impreza Sport. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.